Hi, how are you? It's me. I feel completely normal in this. I've been wearing the Vision Pro for a couple days straight now. I'll wake up, I'll put it on, I'll brush my teeth, I'll get ready for work, and try to live as normal a life as I can with a $3,500 face computer strapped in. And honestly, it's been weird taking it off. That was, <laughs> that wasn't even a joke. That actually just happened, Jesus. It is very much a first generation product. A lot of things don't work consistently well. And above anything, it really is a kind of statement of vision. Apple wants to be able to provide these kinds of crazy spatial experiences, presumably with a headset that doesn't look like you're wearing ski goggles and for less than $3,500. With all that said, here's what worked and what hasn't worked in the first few days I've had the thing. If there's one thing I've liked doing with the Vision Pro more than anything else, it's honestly just watching stuff. It's better than anything I could have imagined. It's also honestly just really fun to pull up a YouTube video and just blow it up super large and just like groove next to it. I've also kind of enjoyed getting some work done on the Vision Pro. I think the issue that comes up there is that not all the apps that you necessarily want to use are available unless I'm using the handset as a secondary screen for my Mac laptop. If your Mac and your Vision Pro headset are all signed into the same Apple ID, they should all generally be aware of each other. So if you have a MacBook, you can just look at it and hit a connect button that hovers over it. But if you're using a closed MacBook or something like a Mac mini like I am here, you open up Control Center, you hit this virtual display button, and then hopefully your computer shows up. Sometimes it doesn't, and that's really annoying. And there <laughs> appears to be no rhyme or reason as to when that happens. And I can't click the button for some reason. There we go. And there my desktop becomes my desktop. I've also had a lot of people ask me if I get nauseous. I generally don't when I'm wearing headsets. The only times I've ever really felt physically uncomfortable are when I've used the solo loop. That just leaves a lot of weight on the front of your face and it makes the back of my neck hurt. And when I have a big browser window in front of me that I'm just sort of scrolling through really fast, sometimes makes me wanna hurl. I also, at one point this week, I think severely disrupted what was otherwise meant to be a quite serious and heartfelt work meeting for a colleague who's leaving the post because I showed up in the Zoom with my creepy, uncanny valley digital persona. Oh, God. <laughs> I think it looks like me. A lot of people think it makes me look like I've had Botox because I can't express the way that I normally would. Like it's just the model doesn't allow me to do that. Now there are some things that just don't really work super great out of the box. I think one of the biggest for me is guest mode because obviously if you have one of these things, people around you are gonna wanna try it. So try it with my producer, Mo. Okay, um, try looking up and accessing Control Center again. Well, okay, so I see the thing and I'm clicking on it. It's just not. It's just not. So what's supposed to happen is when you activate the guest mode, you have five minutes to give the headset to someone else to try it on. And when they put the headset on, they're supposed to go through an eye and hand setup process so the Vision Pro knows what to look for. But that didn't happen any of the first four times that Mo tried. So the Vision Pro was looking at Mo's face, thinking it was my face, and not really understanding how to let Mo do anything at all. It was only on the fifth attempt that we got the hand and eye check feature to work correctly. And after that, Mo seemed to have a pretty good time. Oh. As much as I've enjoyed trying out spatial apps and just using software that's tailor-made for the Vision Pro, there aren't a lot of them right now. My bigger issue is that I spend a lot of time on the internet in web browsers like Safari. YouTube is a great example of how things get kind of weird. There is no YouTube app for the Vision Pro. And if you try to use the website in Safari, it works great for the most part. Everything looks really nice, but sometimes interacting with the controls is a pain. I'm trying to scroll through this video. So I'm trying to grab the playhead in this YouTube video and just move it forward a bit. But for one, Safari just thinks I'm trying to, to drag the, the page around, which is not helpful. Sometimes I can get close and I can try and grab it, but then the Vision Pro thinks I'm trying to hit the start from the beginning button, the replay button instead of the playhead. This is truly just a side effect of the web at large not really being meant to interact with a device like this in that way. I can use a keyboard and a trackpad to do those things more effectively. 
There's a lot of promise here, clearly, and the experiences that I've had with this headset really make me think that maybe I would like something like this in my life full time, but not like this, not with a giant thing sticking off of my face. Hopefully if Apple sticks with it, it becomes smaller and less obtrusive and less just weird to use in front of other people. Once we get there, then yeah, I consider buying one. But as it stands, it's attempt number one, presumably of many, and we'll let you know how life with this continues to develop.